Hello and welcome to the versatile artist in conversation with. This interview series is devoted to how eclectic and varied creative lives can be. That being an artist is an individual journey that can be started and embraced at any age. Today's artist and I have known each other for over 16 years and I feel very privileged to have been a witness of her evolution as an artist over these years. She's an incredible songwriter and singer with an amazing range who masters to switch between a multitude of genres with absolute ease as if it were nothing. She was a finalist at The Voice, toured through South America, the United States, Europe and China, and is quite a star in Argentina. Her album, Cecita Soul Tangos, produced by renowned music producer Ariel Alejandro Gatto, was shortlisted for the Grammys. And this successful collaboration was now reactivated for her newly released song, At Night, which is being played on the radio on rotation. Her radiant presence is infectious, a true sunshine that will brighten up every room she enters. Let me introduce you to the wonderful Miss Sis. Thank you. Hello. Wow, my God. <laughs> I cannot break out in tears now. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, wow, wow. Thank you so much. And thank you for, for seeing all that. Sometimes I forget and wow, thank you. I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> It's the truth. <laughs> and, uh, and, and I mean, we, we have really known each other for a very long time and we have gone through a lot of things together over these years and, and, and both evolved a lot. And it, um, yeah, I mean, you're an incredible musician. And I don't know if I've ever told you, but, you know, when, when I got introduced to your song Steva and Time to Go at a very, very early stage. And I had the privilege to hear them quite often <laughs> because we work yeah. <laughs> together. And I still sing them. I still do. Really? Yes. Really? Whenever I chores or, you know, when something is bugging me, for example, either yeah. of the songs are just so often the perfect songs like the soundtrack for those things I still love those songs so much and I mean you've written so many other th songs but they are still lingering you know they, yes. they, they're so catchy and uh, yeah and there's the interesting story behind them is there was a time when there was MySpace so for anyone who doesn't know what MySpace is, that was a platform where you could actually publish your work. Basically, you could create your own presence online. And actually, that's how someone discovered you. But I don't want to tell you the story. I would like you to tell that story. What <laughs> happened? <laughs> yes. Um, well, first of all, I'm still so thankful that I found you as a teacher and that you brought me to, um, to where I was meant vocally. <laughs> because before, you know, I had a classical teacher and um, still there are some things that are very useful now, but I really had to relearn everything. And I did this with you. So I'm still very very thankful <laughs> can you see what's happening i'm still yeah. very thankful and um and of course i i i did other stuff and i progressed and pro progressed and and um yeah but um yeah this this was really um this was this was my 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 basis and this was where i could build up uh, new things and yes we had this platform this musical platform myspace and i i had my set site my my page and and i just uh, showed some of my music my pictures and whatever and then one day um i got a very nice message because i liked a photo of his brother and he is um, the producer uh, you were introducing already, Ariel Alejandro Gato. And I liked a picture and it was the harbor, the old harbor of Buenos Aires. Mm -hmm. 
and it it made something to me and i felt so connected and there was so many emotions inside of this picture and i think i wrote something and then he wrote me like a, a personal message and he wanted to um, to contact me and he was curious who is this voice who is this songwriter and I said, yeah, it's just me. <laughs> and he said, well, he made me see, I think, um, how outstanding this was. And he gave me very good feeling. And then um, he, I did not know at the time that he was such a successful and such a well-known producer with um, Latin Grammys and, and uh, being nominated on the Grammy Awards for many times and producing over 50 albums per year. And, you know, I had no idea. It was just this nice guy from Argentina and we were writing a lot. <laughs> and, and then he asked me if I wanted to um, show him some songs, some um, unpublished songs that, are, that were not uh, released at time. And I said, yes, of course. And then we started to, to work on some songs. He wanted to produce it. And then we met in Spain. And um, yeah, we really get, got very much into, um, into a nice perspective of working together. Mm -hmm. And for me, it was quite obvious that we should mix soul and tango because both of them were very close to my heart. Mm -hmm. And I spent lots of time in ballet classes. I did classical ballet at the Opera House in Graz and we had a modern ballet, um, actually two modern ballets and one was um, called The Love Songs with songs uh, of the Bacharach album sung by Aretha Franklin and Dion Warwick. Ooh. And on the other hand, we had Five Tangos by Astor Piazzolla. And I heard this at the same time, like stereo, all the time. And so I think this is where it uh, connected in my brain that this can go together. Mm -hmm. And so um, I showed him some songs and then we picked some songs and then we really started to produce an album mm -hmm. um, so many kilometers apart. And we did uh, half in Argentina, half in Austria. And then I, um, yeah, then I went there. Um, and, you know, I could not believe because, I mean, I only, I, I only started understanding within the last years what he, what this man did for me and what he did for my music, because he made this big orchestra with, um, the conductor was Gabriel Sinanes, um, who was the, the leader in the Teatro Colón, which is like the state's opera house in Vienna. Mm -hmm. And the concertino, like the first violinist, he was uh, Fernando Suarez Paz, who used to be the first violinist of Astor Piazzolla. Yeah. So, and when I got there, I, I did not get it because here in Austria, you know, many people said, yeah, that's nice, but um, perhaps you should change this and should change that. And I felt like the stupid young girl and said, aha, uh aha, -huh, uh -huh, perhaps it's not good enough. And then when I went there, I mean, I was really with the masters and every, everybody said, oh, la senora and la senora. <laughs> and then I thought, hmm, what's happening here? <laughs> and yeah this this was how it all started and i feel so privileged that um ariel gato wanted to work with me and that all the other people wanted to work with me and that they showed me so much and i love this passion of the argentinians so much and somehow i felt more at home there and lots of of the argentinians told me and you're from Austria, are you sure? <laughs> you're more like we are. And it was a, a great connection. And, and um, to me still, Buenos Aires is the city of flow. No matter where you look at, no, no matter if you observe the people, if you observe uh, what is happening in the traffic, on the street, or um, when they play music, it's like they're taken away. It's so emotional and it's, um very very special and very precious mm -hmm. <laughs> wow what a story i mean <laughs> this is really amazing and and i when i remember when i heard about that 
And I thought, if someone deserves it, then you. <laughs> because, because you have such a big heart. You're so positive. You know, you're an amazing friend. <laughs> um, and you're incredibly talented. And your, your talent is a huge gift as well. But the most amazing thing is that at the time, at the beginning, when you were already writing those amazing songs, you did not even know really, you know, all the theory behind it, you know, the notes and, and not at all harmonies and anything. My God, how did you do that? And, and how has this changed? <laughs> has it changed? <laughs> yes, yes. I think I'm very intuitive and I was very musical from the beginning on. What I want to say, I started playing the piano by playing what I heard. I everything did by hearing. Yeah. I, I did everything by hearing. And until today, it is hard for me um, to get it right with notes. Um, and I think I have really a very tiny mathematical um, part in my brain. And this is why I cannot deal with notes. But um, I, I found out that there are different ways because um, then I um, learned from uh, pianists how to play chords and mm -hmm. uh, what voicings I can do and that I can turn it around and I learned yeah. some patterns. Mm -hmm. And that was important that I could, that, that, because I needed it for songwriting. And until now, I'm not a pianist, although I played the last single because it was a lockdown, mm -hmm. low budget single. And I, I, I yeah. mm -hmm. and, and, and I thought, well, it will be enough for this. And it's voice and, and it, it's like, I think it's like the essence, like the very essence yeah. of me as a singer songwriter, my playing the piano and my singing. Mm -hmm. And um, of course, you know, Ariel um, helped me a bit in the studio and you know you you can you can put some notes a bit more to the right or to the left and mm -hmm. they're really in the right spot but he kept it very natural and I'm not ashamed of of, of saying this because um, yeah if I'm on stage I want to play with the real pros because mm -hmm. they studied and um, and practiced for years every day many hours and so of course there is a huge difference but I thought perhaps this this would be a nice statement and also um, I made a statement as a songwriter with my latest single because I did it in um, German dialect in mm -hmm. Austrian dialect and I did it in in English because I did all my releases until now in English. So that's three albums and many more singles. Mm -hmm. um, and I love to sing in English. And, um, but I'm writing, um, uh, I'm writing in German and in French and in Spanish mm -hmm. and for many, many, many years and hardly anybody knows. And so I thought, first, this is a nice statement as a songwriter, but more it was that I really wrote this for the people because so many people are afraid at the moment and have um, um, sorrows, they are worried no matter about um, getting this virus or about their uh, future, uh, their money, uh, if they can feed their children or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I thought I'm, I'm living in such a nice parallel world with all my joy, my hope, my faith and everything inside and I want to share this. And so I really, made this clear decision that I will do it in both languages that more people can understand it without going to the brain first and then uh, coming to their hearts and um, yeah so this was why and um, yeah I think as a songwriter until now um, I'm working quite um, quite a lot with my intuition and what I hear and sometimes I I wake up sweaty or not with <laughs> with a huge symphony in my head and then I, I tell myself hmm, how are you gonna do this and this is why I had to learn uh, stuff like um, home recording and and recording mm -hmm. the piano and and making nice uh, demos and then I can tell the producer and um we can work together that I show him 
but I, I can just like explain or show him the big picture mm -hmm. uh, because what, what I can deliver as a demo is only um, perhaps some choirs added, but it's only my voice and it's only the piano. Mm -hmm. And so <clears throat> I had to learn the stuff that are really, that is really necessary for me to bring everything needed to the people that make it bigger. Mm -hmm. But I never felt the urge to, le to learn all the music theory, musical theory um, because I have great people, great colleagues around me. If I need to have a perfect lead sheet for the musicians or for the producer, I will ask a colleague, can you do this for me? I will send her my recording and then she will write it for me. Mm -hmm. And I think as a songwriter and the way I work, um, it is not necessary and it would take some, um, it, it would take out some of my naivete mm -hmm. because I think this is precious because sometimes when I'm working with music theory specialists, let's put it that way, then, yeah. then they ask me, how, how come that you you walk from here to here or what is this change what is this tension and I said I don't know but I just like it and it just came to my mind and I think it's just perfect for this song mm -hmm. and I I'm always like communicating with my songs because sometimes producers have great ideas and they make lots bigger and I always say okay if it is still what the song wants then I agree on it and I say okay let's do this mm -hmm. but if I feel no 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 this is going into a different or wrong direction mm -hmm. um then I said I'm sorry the song doesn't want to be like that mm -hmm. um you can make different um offers or suggestions or whatever but um it's not gonna be like this mm -hmm. and it's and it's like I feel it's a bit like this like every song is my child and I know as a mother what this child needs best on earth no producer no babysitter no uh, whoever so and and I learned to be of course with the years and with the successes um I learned to be very clear with that mm -hmm. yeah you have definitely more confidence because you 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 have something to show and, yes and yeah and and it has worked that's the point as well it has worked in this way yeah. absolutely yeah when you're writing for other people is is it different for you when you write songs for other people how is this collaboration working well um <clears throat> i love to write for other people mm -hmm. and the funny thing is that i don't have to know anything about them and I just get the right song for them. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I did this for the first time for a, a very, very um, professional and famous singer in Austria, she, she was um, very much into musical theater until she, until she got her children. And she's an amazing singer. I always admired her for many, many years. And we met at a, a pink ribbon um event and um both of us were singing there and i thought oh my god she will be here eva maria marold and i admired her for such a long time already but i didn't have to think i didn't have to go on thinking because she walked straight straight towards me and she said are you the one with the soul tangles and i said yes i am <laughs> and she said your album is in the first place on my to buy list and i said what i mean i'm so happy you're such an idol you're such a role model and i love your voice and whenever i saw you in musical theater i thought i think all the others can go i just want to listen to you <laughs> and and i said you know i'm so happy because i have some albums in my handbag of course for for the press and and all the people there but they won't listen to it anyway. And I, I'm so happy that ca I can give it to you because you really wanted to buy it and you're really interested. And, and you're, I mean, this is such an honor for me that you wanted to listen to my music. And um, so 
that that was how we connected and then um she was um uh, on tv with dancing stars and she invited me to be her guest and at the after show party she asked me you know it was a bit like a proposal she mm -hmm. asked me oh now we have a sparkling wine and now i want to ask you would you write songs for me and i said <laughs> yes i'd love to mm -hmm. and then i asked her um do you have any special wishes or is there a special, a certain topic you want me to write about, or is there anything you, you, mm -hmm. you, you want to um, tell me what I should um, con consider? What is there anything? And she said, no, let's just, let's just try it like this. <laughs> and then, you know what? It was so crazy, really. I was in love with the song I wrote for her and perhaps there was kind of connection in between us and perhaps something uh, we had in common. But when I sent her the song, the demo, I, I'm still sorry that I don't have this uh, voice recording on this already gone um mobile phone because she was close to tears and she told me she she was on my voicemail and she said oh my god Sissy, what can i say what can i say i mean i'm listening to your song over 10 10 times now and i can't stop crying and i don't know why do you know me so well you you cannot you just cannot and this just hits me in every part of my being and um with your song, I can also, not only emotionally, but also I can show what my voice is able to do. And you really, you, you, you have all my favorite tones and notes inside. And I don't know what I can say. Perhaps I love you would be the only right thing to say. <laughs> and I was just, what? <laughs> That was amazing. And um, yeah, and then I wrote more for her. And so, and, and, Sometimes, I mean, if, if people have wishes or they want to have a certain story um, in the song, they can tell me, but I don't need it. I don't know why. And, you know, it's, it's not that um, some people, when they hear me talking, yeah, and, you know, I have... I have staples of, of, of songs and, and uh, there were so many for so many years. And then they were a bit like, aha uh -huh. and and what is she telling me now but i never did um much ado about it i mean it, it it it's just it's just like this i started riding at 16 or 17 and mm -hmm. for me it's like riding a bicycle and of course the songs are different and of course um the songs are getting better and better i think but it depends on the topic and i think i as you said i think i can write for any genre for any voice and it's just like this and i'm very thankful and perhaps this is one of my biggest gifts i got from god from my genes from whoever um i'm very thankful but um i think this is also why i never felt something like a writer's block when 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 people tell me about the writer's block i just don't understand because i i it, it's like when people you said that i'm such a happy person and such a sunshine i cannot even tap into feeling how someone with a depression feels i have no idea and i'm just there and i say okay can i help you and so um i will bring you there if you want me to um but i just cannot imagine how how you feel Mm -hmm. and so i don't know um it, it's the same with the songs i mean i just don't know how it feels if you think you cannot write a song because i can do it instantly sometimes um uh when when singing students come and they say you know and they're very shy and they say oh and i want to i want to write a song and look and here this is like nothing and i say no come on let's let's <laughs> let's listen to it and, and show me something and then within this this one uh, singing lesson she has the song completed and goes with it um happily <laughs> and she says 
we did this now in one hour, not even one hour, because we were talking and I was explaining a lot. I was yeah. apologizing a lot. I was doing lots of things that were not necessary that stole our time. And I said, yeah, but I mean, it's just, it's just here. <laughs> Amazing. Really fantastic. I mean, your presence on stage is also something that I hope I can enjoy very soon again. <laughs> I mean, depending on how the pandemic is going. Mm, me too. <laughs> Uh, but I, I mean, what is so amazing because I'm super scared of the stage, actually. I'm, I'm really scared. But for you, when I see you on stage, it's like you're born to be there. You know, it's so natural. And, and I really hope that I will be able to see you again very soon on stage because it's a huge joy to see you on stage. And while I am someone who's super scared of the stage, which is a bit impractical let's say it this way <laughs> being being an actress um and, and and being scared of the stages at the same time but when i see you on stage it feels like you were born to be there you know you have this amazing connection with with your audience and and also the way you sing is like it's it's kind of exploding it's much <laughs> more that i think i've ever heard you in any kind of a rehearsal whatever that means in a further yeah. set situation but on stage I think your voice you know there's there are extra doors that are opening it's like a dome that is is suddenly around you and wow <laughs> how you radiate and, and and fill up the room so I mean I don't want you you become self-cautious about that <laughs> <laughs> because too much self-awareness uh, I, I, don't, I don't know but no, how that's you, good. How do you feel for yourself is the difference between a live performance and and in the studio? Yeah, it's it, it's a whole different world. Mm -hmm. I love both. Mm -hmm. And um I think I worked a lot on my self-confidence and nerves that I can just go on stage and enjoy mm -hmm. because it was not always like that. Mm -hmm. I think there's lots of mindset. There is lots of um, with what kind of people you're on stage. Because this is a very, very important point that I um, noticed not so long ago. I don't know if I really could enjoy it if I was alone alone on stage mm -hmm. i don't think that i could do comedy or something like this because i always need an interaction I yeah. as i love interviews and to be in a conversation yeah. and i am in a conversation with the audience as well mm -hmm. i love to have a conversation on stage mm -hmm. and i really <clears throat> i really found out over the years that it, it absolutely depends um, on which musicians I am on stage with mm -hmm. if I am if if I am free or not if I feel really supported or not if I can be just in the flow and just do what I need to do or if I'm still caught in too much responsibility because I don't trust fully or I'm not sure if this will sound like it should or um, because I think this freedom on stage is only possible um, if you can fully trust. Mm -hmm. If you can fully trust yourself and what you do, if you can fully trust in whatever might help you from heaven, universe, God, whatever you believe in, mm -hmm. if you fully trust your musicians <clears throat> and you fully trust the technicians mm -hmm. <laughs> and i think the more of this is set up um in the perfect way then you can just let go and then you can just um give yourself away as a big gift to the audience to the world to whatever but i have to confess when i was a little little girl mm -hmm. and i had not all the traumas and everything and you know the, all those feelings of not being good enough not blah 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 mm -hmm. i always enjoyed it so much if we if we went somewhere where there was a big square or something like this yeah. 
and I wanted to be in the middle of the square and I wanted to be seen and I no matter if I danced or I sang or I just did nothing I wanted to stand there and be seen <laughs> <laughs> and perhaps this is what I'm what what I've been taking in over the last years again, because I remembered, hey, I was this little girl. Many years were a mess and many people told me. No matter what, mm -hmm. all the bullshit we all have, but then I told myself, OK, we're going to take this out. We're going to take this out of the system like like in a beautiful um, I don't know what this is in English. If 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 you have flowers somewhere yeah. in in the and and then there there is lots of grass and other stuff and you just have to put it out. <laughs> that I... the flower can that the flower can take the space, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so we all have our habits. We all have our convictions, our thoughts, our what we heard from our parents, from our teachers, from our colleagues, from our uh, yeah. And we just have to get rid of it. And yeah. we just have to free ourselves from this and no and and don't cry over spilled milk. If you did not do it until now, do it now. Now now is the only chance we have. Yeah. And if, if you do it in future, then you lost lost even more time. So just go for it. Just do it now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you're originally from Styria, and I'm wondering, I mean, I think your family is musical and, and art. Yes. They're not artists as, as in the professional sense, but I don't have this division anyway. For me, it's someone is is has an art, artistic, you know, vein uh, in them. And most people do, actually, in my opinion, there's always something creative in, in any person. Yes. But how do you think has this upbringing in Styria, your family, kind of shaped you uh, you said something about the genes that it is in your genes for, <laughs> for this so <laughs> yeah i think um it brought me forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back mm -hmm. like in every life um and i think there is nothing well i think i think now with all i've experienced you should on you should rely on everything that sounds good to you is where you could have gotten something out <laughs> okay yeah. so no matter what it is but just to 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 give you a short um insight i grew up singing this was like normal and mm -hmm. whenever um whenever um my mother prepared everything if we if we went away for the weekend or something like this then she needed her time in the bathroom and packing the things together and this was the moment when my father took his guitar and he started singing with us and in all the um typical children coming down situations <laughs> driving in the car um hiking uh, going for long distances, which I hated. Um, they tried. They tried to to bring us into a good mood, and no matter what, we were just singing. Mm -hmm. And I was uh, the smallest uh, girl, and I was so proud that I could uh, keep my my pitch when we were singing in in uh, different voices. Mm -hmm. And I was com competitive, but um, so I think. I had so much musicality in me and my grandmother, I mean, like everybody sang in the family, but my grandmother, she was an organist and she was, um, she was, um, what's it, uh, bringing, bringing a choir uh, to the world or how do you say it? She, she was founding a choir. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she was founding a choir. She was leading, conducting the choir. She, she, she was, she was incredible. Mm -hmm. And um, actually I learned to, to, to play by ear on her piano. And, um, but the other thing was, so on the one hand, this was so normal for every one of us. That was a very good thing. And it's like when you when you grow up in a, in a very sportive family and everyone knows how to ski, of course, you know how to ski because everyone does. And then they put you on the skis and then you just ski because you're in this family and and everybody in this family can. And so you have this belief. Yeah. And I think and and of course, I 
I was already listening already as a child. I was listening to so many different genres because in my father's family, there was more <clears throat> clerical music and folk music, traditional Austrian music. Mm -hmm. And in my ballet classes, I heard lots of Tchaikovsky and I heard lots of all the ballet music stuff and um, classical music and um, and my sister and my father loved to listen to pop music. So I already had lots of different music styles from the beginning on around me. But as you know, I listened a lot. I had a great musicality, <clears throat> but I had no sound. So <clears throat> mm -hmm. I had a voice. I had pitch, but I had no sound. Mm -hmm. And this took me for so many years to get where I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes I think <laughs> my songwriting helped me and that I, I knew so well that my songs wanted to be like this. So I had to learn how to sing them. And <clears throat> some of them were so difficult to sing, mm -hmm. but they wanted to be in that key and they wanted to be in that range. And so I had to learn it. So go and do your work. <laughs> And so um, it's very nice now because I can rely on it. But mm -hmm. yeah. And, you know, of course, <clears throat> the same family that was so musical and where everyone was singing, they had the strong conviction that this is no job. Mm -hmm. No question about it. No discussions. You're mm -hmm. going to study something useful, something you can earn money with, mm -hmm. something, you know, all the blah, 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 blah. And um, yeah, and so they kind of prevented me from growing. And um, yeah, I think in every story, there is something that hinders you, something that you know that is good, something, you know, but I think it's, it's, it's like in teaching voices. You, everyone has a different package and yeah. everyone has, some are good in pitch, some are good in their natural sound, some are good with their body, yeah. some, so, and so what? And you only have to find out uh, what you already have and what you can trust mm -hmm. and work on the other things. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you, you, in the end, you start, you're actually entered the industry relatively late or so we thought at the time Absolutely. i mean that's the thing is at the time that's what we thought in hindsight i think because now it's been a very long time i mean we are speaking 15 years or so that's a very long time in the industry and to be a press a constant presence in the industry i think that is more important than anything else yeah but what i've always admired right. about you is your integrity and that and your honesty, you know, and I think that is reflected in your music. So I, I think that I, I, if I'm wrong, you can can say you can just say, but I think that is your foundation, you know, for for your honesty and your authenticity in your songs and also on on your on the stage. That's what we can see. That's what kind of that's the kind of spark that that can be felt. Uh, you're very honest and 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 do you think that because you and entered late in uh, into the industry and you had much more life experience than a lot of other people had and you actually had a job you were working and you were earning money you were successful and i had money so, yeah i had yeah um do you think that is something i think that i think that made a big difference yeah yeah do you think that made you yeah, clear I, yeah. about what you wanted and uh, also, in yeah, both in terms of your personal journey as an artist, but also when it comes to the collaboration with artists? Do you think that that is mm, mm -hmm. the reason mm -hmm. or one of the reasons? Yeah, I think that I think there are there are many reasons. And um, as I said before, I think there are. There is a beauty in every story, no matter at what time or, and you know, for me, 
lots of money before because this gave me freedom. This gave me the freedom to um, make my own label, to not depend on uh, decisions of of um, a major label to not depend on decisions of management to not depend on anybody else's money yeah um it it gave me the freedom that i knew about marketing and that i knew how to how to raise a brand mm -hmm. and i knew how to um how to do things and mm -hmm. i was very good in what i did and i am um, a, a, a visionary i'm ambitious i'm competitive and i always burned so much for this mm -hmm. and so i think um sometimes pe people are um too much overthinking um when they have to achieve something mm -hmm. and how this should be exactly mm -hmm. um because I think if you have this vision or this big dream and then you do your uh, your exercises or you 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 um, invest mm -hmm. um, in it no no matter with what with your time with your energy with your love with your um, progress with your uh, education with whatever um, mm -hmm. then it will be just right and I I think. Um, I always wanted to be a prof professional dancer. So I never thought I would end up as a professional singer and songwriter. And although I did it, although I did it and although I loved it. And then of course I was in this professional um, machinery and then in, in this, <laughs> I mean like, um, this is your work and you have five, five weeks per year holidays. And in these five years, I would do everything for singing and for songwriting. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, but the funny thing is actually now with the pandemic, I get a chance to earn my money now with my former job, yeah. which was in the beauty industry. Yeah. And now I can earn money for making music with what I did before and where I did my studies. And so I think, it's all falling into place. Yeah, yeah. And there is a reason for everything. And and when you look back, I mean, now I'm turning 45. I cannot believe it. And when I look back, I feel like uh, the famous speech of Stephen Jobs um, connecting the dots. Yeah. But everything made perfect sense. Mm -hmm. Everything made perfect sense. Yeah. And and I think also with with teaching singing, my own singing got so much better because sometimes I hear myself explaining to someone um, what I need for myself. <laughs> I know. I know that very well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And and so and you know there are artists who are just made for stage and they have no interested. They have no interest in in teaching and um, and in helping other people. And perhaps this was also a reason why I didn't have an early career because I never had these elbows mm -hmm. and I never. I was so much a team player and I came from a big family with, with many siblings and I was such a caretaker and I was mm -hmm. such a helper and I was a, and I think if you want to be like the one on stage um you need to have this this attitude yeah, yeah. attitude yes mm -hmm. this attitude and this um perhaps in some cases brutality as well that's not me and so i built up something different and um when i was touring in china for example we had only huge concerts and um, when, when, when I go back to the point where we uh, uh, spoke about stage fright, mm -hmm. in China, I was never afraid because I knew nobody. Ah, okay. It made, it made a big difference. And you know, there are just, and also in Argentina, it was crazy because we had our, um, our uh, uh, CD release concert, album release concert. Mm -hmm. And... Um, all in a sudden, every one of the musicians got very nervous. And I said, what's happening? And they said, yeah, you know, Victor Hugo Morales is here. And I said, who is Victor Hugo Morales? I don't know. And then I said, yeah, you know, he has his own um, 
his own uh, um, uh, <laughs> TV station, his, his, his yeah. own uh, broadcasting thing. And he's a superstar because he's, um, he's our the one um, soccer um, moderator and, and he does all the soccer. And you know, in Argentina, uh, soccer yeah. Is, yeah. Uh, is like, so he was a god to them. Yeah. And I, I smiled because of my thoughts and because of their thoughts, because I, yeah. I thought it's just another unknown person in the dark that I will not see. Mm -hmm. And so I switched my mindset. So they were all very nervous. And you know what happened? I told them, um, I can only do my best, no matter if he's in there or not. I feel privileged that he came, but I don't know him. And so for me, it's another person in the dark. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for them it was like and, yeah. and it was so great because afterwards he had to go to a, a tv show um yeah. and he um he said um to somebody please tell her that it was amazing and that i want to have her in my radio show i invite her and then you know, and then somebody told me that when he went to this TV show afterwards, he was talking about me in the TV show. <laughs> and I thought, like, what? And, and then the musicians got even more nervous because they said, but you know, when you were in, when we were having interview at Victor Hugo Morales, and, and then you have to know, um, you have to have a perfect Spanish. And I said, well, do you think he expects this? He knows that I'm from Austria and he knows that I'm singing in English. And I did my best. I mean, I'm, I'm quick with learning languages, but yeah. um, I, can, I can do conversations in Spanish. And if he needs anything more, I will ask you to help me, right? So be yeah. pragmatical because anything else uh, causes fears only and nothing yeah. else. And then, you know what happened? It was amazing. He was so nice and he was so, so gentle and so so i have no words for this but it was really like like a big experience and he was so kind and he really wanted to have me there and he even had a translator okay wow so much much ado yeah. about nothing right and yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, so um and this is also what 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 i tell my students or anyone um Please stop to worry about things that, that, that are not happening. <laughs> Such an important advice. And I will actually write it down and stick it on my computer. <laughs> <laughs> because it really makes no sense. Because yeah, you, it does. And especially now, everything is shifting all the time. And you, you have all the people who are not flexible have to learn it now, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And so, I mean, why do we worry about things that might not happen 90% mm -hmm. at, at the, um, yeah. So, yeah. Um, and, the, and, and, and with this pandemic, we find out, okay, today it is like this and, and we want to make plans, but tomorrow everything changed. So we can just throw away our plans and we can say, okay, what's next? What can we do now? And tomorrow it might be the same. Yeah. And so just sometimes don't plan too much and don't be worried about things that might not happen yeah and i say if a problem occurs of course you have to think about what could be the solutions and how to deal with it but yeah as, as long as it hasn't occurred so why am i wasting my energy <laughs> yeah yeah amazing i mean i actually have a few more questions i'm not sure if i destroy this because this is there's so much wisdom oh. that you have already <laughs> shared um i'm kind of reluctant but i i, I think i will go forward with them but I mean, yeah, yeah. No, I'm, no, I'm so glad I asked you because there is, this is this is precious what you're sharing, and I'm <laughs> I'm sure everyone who's going to watch this will take away so much. Good, good. This. I love amazing, that idea. Amazing, really. Thank you so much. So Please good. take it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, really, and yeah, wow. So I, I'll try to get uh, smoothly to my. Yeah question which is i mean you have touched on that already um by saying that this is actually now kind of paying for for the music that you're making meaning your old job 
you're actually also a very talented and very skilled makeup artist and you you actually trained people for Yves Saint Laurent yes. and I mean, I mean you have made me up <laughs> on multiple very important occasions of my life actually <laughs> and um and this is always a dream I I I mean I'm very I'm very strict about how people are making me up and and there was never a doubt about trusting you because I you yeah you see people and yeah this is not just in the music but also in the makeup you will I mean even if if you put full on makeup on somebody I mean I ask you a few times to you know really go overboard yeah. but I never felt you know like Asked. Not me and I don't like a lot of makeup on me I tend to you know I, I like good liner and stuff and a little bit of smoky eye is totally fine for me and I think when it comes to color purple is the max usually when I do it um but um you know and I, I you did something on me that was like greenish and yellowish and like like a peacock all almost the colors I mean but I didn't look like a peacock I looked amazing <laughs> and and I think we went on, <laughs> for a coffee at Graben in Vienna afterwards and I felt and that was during the day it was not even evening and I felt totally confident with this full-on makeup because you you are able to do it in a way that it it I was still me and people are still they you know so um what is my question actually oh yeah <laughs> because the, the two art forms are quite different in general so making music or it appears to be different but I mean how, they have how, more in common. How do they it. come together? I mean, of course, you can style yourself, which is amazing to be your very own uh, makeup artist <laughs> that, that you can do it for yourself in the most perfect way, actually. But how, how, how do they come together? How do they influence each other? Do they influence each other at all? Yes. 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 I think <laughs> that's funny because you, you were kind of worried that this could be a downgrade but I think this is this is connecting to what we had before um I think um <laughs> I think have you ever heard of synesthesia no synesthesia no. um it's that you uh, can combine different sensations that when I smell, and I was totally into perfumery as well. I mean, I was I was also training perfumes and skincare and and makeup, and sometimes people around me said, "You are a bomb of senses," um, and I, I I smell extreme. I feel extreme. I extremely, I, I, it's everything, it's everything extreme and I can combine all these and it, perhaps this is another gift that I'm very thankful for, Halicin. but I think what, what it, it all has in, in common is, um, I love people, I see the best in every person, so I see the best in every face. Mm -hmm. So I see the best in every song, in, in every song that could be a contribution to their lives. Um, I just want to um, make things easier, freer, happier, no matter what it is. And so um, in training, no matter if I'm, if I'm doing a makeup training, if I'm doing a, a, a perfume training, a fragrance training, a skincare training, um, a singing training, a mindset training, mm -hmm. whatever I'm doing, I ask myself, and this is, one of the, uh, this is one of the most important questions I found out. To hit the point, what does the other person need? Mm -hmm. That's simple. No matter who is in front of you, no matter in what subject you are, no matter in what does the other person need. And really, it happens to me so many times um, that, especially when I'm in a one-to-one -one training mm -hmm. um, and when I'm working with a singing student, for example, also concerning, um, also, yeah, 
uh, when it's about technique, when it's about mindset, when it's about psychological things, no matter what, the question is, what does he or she need right now? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is it to, to feel secure about this and that? Is it about, um, do they need a hug? Do, whatever it is. And you know, sometimes when they are shy or they, want, uh, or they cannot get there what they need, then I, I start to ask questions mm -hmm. to, to, to motivate them to, to mm -hmm. go crazy, whatever it can be. And sometimes the most um, <clears throat> unexpected things occur and, 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 and they're like astonished. Oh, wow, this is what I need. I, I could never have thought about this, but now it works. <laughs> wow. And, <clears throat> and as, you, as you were talking about, I mean, colors. To me, music is colors. And this is like the synesthesia thing. Um, when I was working with my favorite producers, we were also talking in colors. Here we need a little bit more green in the production. So um, this was um, the, um, what's the word? The, the wood, um, <laughs> the wood blows, I don't know if, if it is in a, like, like um, the strings would be for me, they would be orange, yellowish, uh -huh. or something like this, or a cello would be a bit more like bronze or something like this. Uh -huh. And so, um, yeah, and we were talking like this in, in the sound studio, we were talking about the song production and about yeah. harmonies and about instruments. And yeah. we said, yeah, we need a little bit more green in here. And so it all goes together. And um, yeah. for, some, for some people, these things are more connected. Some, some people smell something when they, when they are touched, like physically touched. Interesting, yeah. And some, some people um, feel it in a spot of a body uh, when they taste something. And, you know, there are some, some connections. And so for me, this is not far apart at all. <laughs> and it's all creativity and intuition and seeing what is in front of me and for me seeing the best what is in front of me and if I feel there is a need for no matter what because if people tell me okay I trust you then I just go ahead mm -hmm. and I said okay and I mean with makeup I don't know perhaps I told you at that time I always said when I did the trainings for makeup the only thing you can do wrong is that you get nervous when you think that the person might not like, but better make sure before, mm -hmm. let her look into the mirror. Mm -hmm. And then you say, if there is anything too much or you don't like, we can just erase it yeah. with, a, with a cotton and with something on it. I mean, it's not like you cut your hair and then it's for the next yeah. five years. <laughs> yeah, that's a beautiful and, I mean, nothing happens. Yeah. Nothing, nothing happens. Nothing. It's very easy. And so I think... Yeah, it's very easy. And I think sometimes we're just overthinking, overdoing, and especially female. We, we, we were so much conditioned to do this extra and this extra and be strong and go for this and do this extra. And as you know, for singing, this is killing us because it's, yeah. it's, uh, every, everything we do extra goes into the throat and then we, yeah. we push, we press, we squeeze. We, yeah. No, just Letting go is the key. What, what was one of the most most helpful tools for me is to bore myself when singing because I'm so much in this yeah in this doing thing and making things happen and when I just stay with myself mm -hmm. very centered like bore myself let everything loose my tongue works anyway and then I just <laughs> have my my uh, focus and I say okay I wanted to go there but I don't bring it there mm -hmm. I just say go there and then it happens and letting it happen. Sometimes it's, it's also about being more passive because we don't notice that we are overactive many times mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and proactive and just let things happen. Yeah. And just sometimes it's all, also good for me to stay with the question, mm -hmm. to stay mm -hmm. with the question and then an answer will appear. <laughs> Wow, yeah, that's yeah. true. <laughs> yeah, let, I want to let this linger a bit, but I try to move on because I that's my job here. 
<laughs> to, but wow, yeah. <laughs> there's steps in there, holy rockamole, wow. So there is a great connection with this overdoing things. Yes. When I was on stage, um, I really poured myself out in a bad way because <laughs> if, if you can work with this metaphor, with this picture, um, when I was on stage, I tried to bring, to serve everybody, every detail. Mm -hmm. And I really, I, I, my body sensation was like, I have to blow myself against them, mm -hmm. that I get them. Mm -hmm. But this overexhausted me. Yeah. And when I stay with myself mm -hmm. and I just feel like the sun, the source of the sun is glowing, right? And it will go there, 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 there by itself. Mm -hmm. And if it's too much for the people, <laughs> they go to the shadow, right? Mm -hmm. And but um it's about staying with yourself and just trusting that it finds its way to the people. Yeah. And then this is really where the magical stuff happens. Um, because when people told me after a concert, after a show, here I really could not help but cry. And you made me goosebumps all over and my, my tears. I could not prevent um, my tears from, 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 from falling. And I could remember, oh, this was the moment when I mm -hmm. stayed with me. Mm -hmm. I just made sure, of course, I'm seeing for these people. That's why we're here and I can yeah. see them. I mean, we're not stupid, but yeah. I did so much extra things that sometimes it cuts off yeah. other things. But I, I was so over exhausted because I over exaggerated in a way. And then the next day I was dead. <laughs> so it was a lose lose situation because I made the outcome at the concert a bit smaller than it could have been because if it's just a flow and it's boom then it hits everyone mm -hmm. but if you do something extra you know it's like a, a, a compression yeah yeah, yeah. and it, it, it's limiting yeah. yes yeah. it's limiting yeah and as soon and and I have to uh, to tell my, myself every time again and again and again Stay with yourself, Sissy. Yeah. That's enough. You know where to go. You have your focus. And, and then sometimes I feel like singing backwards because I'm so much to the front my whole life. And then I feel like I'm singing backwards and I will, it will go there anyway. Mm -hmm. And then it's like the, the double win, 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 win situation. Uh -huh. And the, the result is way better. And I'm not so overexhausted. Mm hmm so there is another connection <laughs> lots of connections <laughs> yeah 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 i can i can think of so many here all, all together what you already said and i i think that is really i mean that's the authenticity that i meant at the beginning and this kind of integrity that can be felt both mm -hmm. in songs in all of your work and also when we can see you on stage mm -hmm. when 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 you're with you and because mm -hmm. that's pure and what you also said about at night this this is the essence of you and the song um and yeah i think that's where it is that's exactly where it is that's enough it does and, and that's so important i mean the skill and everything that you have develop that shines through that's the work around it before it but when you're actually performing you have to take that's it back the moment when you have to let go yeah and trust yes the, the yes moment basically yeah yeah and i think there is something very interesting to observe in the video because it exactly shows what my coach told me you know me, I'm a very excited person and, and I, <laughs> I, I, I can be very quick and very uh, expanding and, and many things. But he told me, when you do nothing, you're the most spectacular. Mm -hmm. was that and it was like a bomb for me and I what thought. Did, was that Dean? I, 
No, no, no. It was a, he was a, a life coach. <clears throat> ah, okay. Because yes. I, I thought I, that Dean also said that once to to you. Uh huh. I, I thought. Yeah. Yeah, and I think in this video there is nothing extra. Yeah. And I, I mean, in the song and how I sang it, and it's just flow. It's just staying with myself, just sharing. Yeah. But there is nothing extra. There yeah. is no add-on. There yeah. is nothing I want to show. Nothing I. Uh, I want to show off with mm -hmm. um, and it's just so simple and so much with me mm -hmm. and I think this is what what he told me then I'm the most spectacular and when people watch this video they tell me I do almost nothing in this video just shine and sing and so many people told me now I can only see your whole strength Mm -hmm. but I don't do any strong things yeah the, the intensity of your voice is amazing in this song even though you reduce it actually you, you sing in certain areas airy but still it has this incredible intensity and you also you jump between like I mean you have so many facets in your voice colors again yeah, colors. Yeah, colors yeah, yeah. colors is <laughs> and yeah. I, yeah. and and I allow them. I yeah. just allow them. Mm -hmm. I, I don't make them. Yeah. So again, this is just allowing it. It's just yeah. passively. Yeah. And this is, and also I had a long journey really connecting with my real emotions and really um, showing them. Mm -hmm. And I think now I'm at the point where the real stuff is happening and, and where the real touching things, because when you really, and I don't have to tell you, I mean, <laughs> you're a pro with emotions and acting and, and, and all, all these things. And, and you know that without the right emotion, the real emotion, and it's, I had really to get this right. If I do as if I was angry, touched, sad, happy, whatever, or if I am, mm -hmm. if I was, if I am while I do it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's and that's the same thing again as putting things out to the people mm -hmm. or just let it happen. Mm -hmm. it's, I think it's the same thing because you're you, you just be mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah. don't do it. Is there anything you would like to, you know, like try out musically, artistically in the future? Something that you haven't had either the chance to or is is something where, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, maybe yeah. there wasn't the right moment yet for it. Life brings it to me because now I was asked to write the title track for a movie, a yeah. short movie. And I think my last single is all about calming down, feeling faith, yeah. feeling that everything's all right. Mm -hmm. And the next song I'm going to release is this title track for this movie. And I was asked to write a very, very sad, broken song. Yeah. And I did it. And what my life did to me, that exactly in that time when I should write the song, it smashed all the bullshit against me. So I had a chance to adapt to this feeling and to get into it. Yeah. And then I said, okay, if it is for the song, okay, then we can make this now. But then when I did this song, I want to have my happy life back again. I, I really, and it was like, sometimes I feel this is like a deal. Sometimes I feel like put, life puts me into situations that I can get this right for the song because the song needs it. And then I'm in this mood and I recorded it. And believe me, I was very happy when I finished the recording because then I said, okay, now <laughs> go away. <laughs> all the sadness and all the the. Uh, despair and and all the, the um yeah hopelessness and i mean it it, it was really poo, it was a bomb but so life gives me the chance right now to go through all these different emotions and to sh to, to to share it with the world in songs mm -hmm. and so i think i don't even have to think about what I would like to do or experiment with me because life brings it to me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's, it, it's like, it's like, 
like somebody made a plan for you for a fun park <laughs> because I, i'm standing in front of this big roller coaster and i think hmm, i'm not sure if i'm gonna do this and then somebody says oh i have a ticket here come on so now you you sit into this um, wagon and go and i'm like okay <laughs> Um, I have one final question. Yes. <laughs> it's my pleasure. Um, it's really my pleasure. I love it so much. I, I, love, I, it, I, I, I love it double. I enjoy it. In a professional it. way, in the personal way. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Re really, same here. Absolutely. The final question is, is um, because, I mean, you're very involved with helping other people to, you know, find their potential and, and, and release that potential. Um, I mean, you can't do that with every person in the world. So this is an opportunity to <laughs> kind of <laughs> spread it further <laughs> than that is humanly possible. Um, so what are the three top tips you th from your point of view for any aspiring musician or artist in general? What you would like kind of advice you would like to give them on their way? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The first that is very clear, this will always be my answer. Follow your heart. It always knows the way. Mm -hmm. And we're so many times caught in sorrows and fears and whatever. And I have a very, very nice picture that came to me one day. If you have this comparison that um, fear and I think that fear is the root of any other negative emotion, like aggression and everything. It's it's just caused by fear. Mm -hmm. So let's 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 say that um, fear is symbolized by darkness, mm -hmm. and that love is symbolized by light. Okay, mm -hmm. and you have a big, big, big hall that is all dark. It's night, and the lights are switched off. And then you take a tiny little candle. Mm -hmm. So what happens? It brightens up. Mm -hmm. It always wins, no matter in what dimensions. Yeah. No matter in what dimensions. Mm -hmm. And so this is why I always point this out. Follow your heart. Um, you cannot go wrong because the light always erases the fear. Mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so the love always erases the fear and um i heard a very very good pianist um who knows me for a long time and he, who got to know me better uh, through this other uh, amazing singer that i wrote songs for because she invited me to do um uh, songs with her in her show like mm -hmm. uh, guest and um and then last year we connected again uh, to to play for a different project and then he told me, you know what, when I got to know you, I thought, this is very interesting. She's doing whatever she likes with the soul tango thing. And I mean, nobody ever did it before. And she's shortlisted on the, for the Grammy Awards. And this just works out. Perhaps not everybody in Austria could see and perhaps she was ignored by some people. But, but he saw so many, 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 many artists who were on a certain track and tried to imitate, tried to copy, tried to things that already were there. And I just did not think about it. I just felt, ah, uh -huh, we're going to do this now. And I had no expectations and, and um, but I just did what, what my heart told me to. And um, he said, she was just doing what, what she wanted and nobody took her for serious or something like this. But then, <laughs> She was on the shortlist for the Grammy Awards. And so that's very interesting. So follow your heart first. Mm -hmm. Second, and I brought it in already. Um, don't define your expectations too clearly. Mm -hmm. Have a big dream. And, you know, dream big, 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 big. But let your life show you how this is going to happen. And if you dream big, choose what you can believe 
to happen. Mm -hmm. Because if you dream big and you don't believe it and you think I can never go there, no anyway. And you know, in our family, there were lots of losers and, uh, or we are always the one who are not lucky or blah, 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 blah. So really mm, look at your dreams, make them as big as possible, but you still have to be able to believe it. And then let it go. Because I always held it in my face and I say, I want this. <laughs> but then you have to trust. And if you don't have trust and faith and, and let, let, let life arrange it for you, it's harder. Mm -hmm. It's harder. Mm -hmm. And the third thing is that happened to me so many times that somebody said, or many people said, this teacher, coach, whatever, is like the big guru now, no matter in, in, in what case. And I always thought, oh yeah, and I am so small and I have no, no clue and no idea and he's the big star and now I believe everything without taking it into my hmm, system without questioning it. Mm -hmm with just giving all the force to this person. Mm -hmm. But I think we should always keep this first and last authorization mm -hmm. to ourselves, back to ourselves, because it's only us who decide if this is really good for us and start questioning yourself mm -hmm. and start to um, keep the balance, mm -hmm. make an equilibrium. Um, because I did this so many times that I, boom, I was just in this direction and I took everything so personal. They told me, but some of them were just not right. And this was not helpful at all, but it destroyed me in a way. And so it's so important, I think, no matter if it was the critic or if it was an advice or it was um, whatever they told you, said, always take it back to you and feel and see and hear and whatever sense you need um, if this is working for you. Mm -hmm. And if this makes things better if this changes for better if this really um is helping you and always decide for yourself i mean not um that i that i, that I but decide because you love yourself that much that you do a decision with love for yourself and I overlooked many times that this was just his ego or he did not know best better. And, and, and I thought, oh, yeah, but he has to know. No, that evaluate, evaluate it again and, and, and have a second look at it. And really, it's only you who can feel what you feel. It's only you and in a physical way and in a, in a, in a, in a, all over way and um and it's only um it's only you you know what is your big dream so if you are a singer or an actor you you know where you want to go to you know how you want to sound like you know how you want to look like whatever and choose people carefully considering that and and I, I, I tell my students all the time, um, perhaps I did my um, practice and I did my things I had to learn and I'm still in progress all the time. I will, I will quit when I die. <laughs> but um, I cannot feel what you feel. And sometimes I'm questioning, I, I say, but do you want to sound it like that? I mean is this only my taste or is it your taste as well? And is it only, because sometimes you know this, Romana, you know this, sometimes they say, 
but you told me to do so and now it sounds like this and i said yeah because i thought you wanted to sound it like this right yeah. uh -huh. and then i said yeah and then i said okay so this was just a misunderstanding now tell me what you want and then i help yeah. you get there mm -hmm. so it's that simple so always decide for your best mm -hmm. thank you i think this is the third advice <laughs> thank you so so much there was there's so much wisdom in this and so so much value in in all this amazing advice uh and wow i wow thank you thank you so much i will definitely <laughs> um put all the links to you know to your new song and and, and your youtube page and everything down in the <laughs> comments below so check out her new song and everything uh sis has ever done um and and yeah i mean that i think that's when you can in addition to this beautiful talk today really feel what what we were talking about today because that's what shines through there as well so yeah thank you so much again cc this thank you thank you so much it was such a pleasure and you know what i mean i always liked you so much and we always had a connection but i did not know that you already saw me like you see me and that's that's a big gift for me really i'm so thankful and thankful for inviting me and for having me. It was biggest joy. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So there's nothing to add here. So um, <laughs> to our audience, now I say goodbye. <laughs> we can see <laughs> afterwards so thank you for for watching this video and leave comments down below in in the comment section and yeah so yeah have a lovely day stay healthy and stay creative and take care bye bye